Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I just want to say thank y'all so much for all the support that y'all have given me over the few years. I finally reached 100,000 subscribers and I got my plaque from YouTube. I just want you to know that that is not all about me. It's all about y'all and the support that you have given me and all the nice, kind words that you have given me throughout the three years that I've been on YouTube. And I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart and I thank you. I love you guys. And uh, I just would not be possible without y'all. So, Today, I'm going to show y'all some more fall DIYs. I've got six of them, and let's get started. I'm just taking a fuzzy sock, and I'm just going to cut it straight across the heel section. And then I'm going to fill it pretty full with some polyfill. You can make it as big as you want to with this, because these socks really do stretch. And then kind of just roll it around there so you can kind of get it pretty even and flat on the bottom. And then I'm just going to take a rubber band and tie it around the top part. Just kind of wiggle it a little bit. It'll get pretty, it'll get pretty flat. Then I'm going to take some jute that I have. I'm using some brown jute. And I'm just going to tie it around the top. Now leave enough hanging over the edge because you're going to start tying off your rope as you go around it. And just going to go around it. Pull it tight. Go around the stem. Tie it around the stem, and then you're going to tie it off with that rope that you just had, the leftover hanging over the edge. And then you're going to go the opposite way and do the same thing. Go around it, tie it around the top part, which is going to be the stem, and then tie it off again. And then we're going to go on the diagonals the same way. And you're not tying it in a knot, you're just tying it one time. And then do the next diagonal and do the same thing and that'll finish out your pumpkin. And if you don't get it exactly even, you can move those around. You can move the little sections around after you get it tied off. Just kind of even them out. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap it around a few times and we're going to cut off the top. And we're going to cut the top a few times. We just want to kind of keep going until you figure out how long you want your stem to be. And then just kind of keep trimming it up. And then when you get to the very top, just kind of get all the fuzz off of it. Trim it off one more time and then we're going to start gluing it on. And then we're going to kind of go into the center until we have it completely filled in. Go all the way down to the bottom, tie that one off, and then you can go ahead and cut your short your short rope. And then we're going to start gluing it at the top and, and can go ahead and seal it in. You want to go ahead and just kind of keep going around in a circle until you have the top part completely covered. If you kind of put your fingers up there and hold it, it kind of spins pretty easily. And then just cover it up completely at the top and go ahead and trim that off. And then we're just going to add a leaf to the side of it. That was pretty easy. The other side of the sock, just tie up the area that you cut and then take a string and tie it around it. And then just turn it inside out and then you'll have a, be, a base to start a second pumpkin. These were super simple. You can make this with just about any sock. Let me know in the comments which one's your favorite today. Okay, for this next one, this is a magnolia leaf. I'm giving you the pattern for in both PDF and SVG. And you're just going to take each one and on the curved end, you're just going to put a little bit of glue and pinch it together and keep going till you have them completely done. I'm using three different colors, three different shades. This is just felt. You can get it at any of the hobby stores. And I'm just going to use three shades in this because I wanted some depth. Then to attach it, I'm just going to attach them next to each other an inch up. So you're going to glue this one an inch up from the stem on that one. And on the second one that you bring in, you're going to just put it where the, the top of the leaf just overhangs the stem on the first one. And just going to keep going and building up until you get it as long as you want it. Just don't glue the top part of that leaf to that other leaf. And just pull that one in. You're going to go an inch 
from the bottom of that stem and glue it to that stem. And then the next one that you bring in, again, you're just going to overlap the top part of that stem just to cover up the bottom of that stem area. And just keep going until you get it as long as you want. I made mine about five foot long and I'm just going to use it for a table runner. And just alternate with the colors so that you do have a consistency throughout. And you can use this for Thanksgiving. You can turn around and use it again at Christmas time. This is something that you can keep in your home any time of the year. But it really doesn't take that long. If you're using the PDF to cut it out by hand, I cut several of them out by hand and they go pretty quick. Just watch a movie and cut them out at the same time. It goes fast. And then once you get it to the length you want it, then just stop. And you can make several of these. If you're putting them on a chair, you can make several of them just to loop on the back of a chair. But they turn out really pretty. Okay, I really like the way this garland turned out. I'm going to run it down my table. You can run it down a tray. You can hang it on a mirror. You can hang it on the back of a chair. You can do so many different things with this little garland, and it really doesn't take that long to make. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For this next one, I'm using two of the Dollar Tree tag signs, and I'm just going to heat it with my heat embosser just to kind of loosen it up to get all the stuff off of it. And just go ahead, and you want to peel all the paper off. Spritz it with some water and then you can use a razor blade to kind of scrape the rest of it off. You want to get all the way down to the board. But there's the board. You can see it. It's darker underneath. That's where you want to get to. And then I'm going to take some um, 200 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to sand both of my boards, both the front and the back. And then I'm just using some wood filler and I'm going to fill in the holes. Just kind of put your finger on both sides and you can get it put, put in there pretty quick. Just hold one side while you do the other side. And then go ahead and sand off those areas right there. Okay, next I'm going to take a two and a half inch washer I got at Lowe's. And I'm going to mark the center hole because that's where I'm going to drill it out so it matches the washer. And just take your drill and drill a hole through it. And then you will have to use a little razor knife too to open it up the rest of the way. You just want to make sure you don't see any of the wood or any of that board outside of that washer. And you can just kind of take your um, drill and kind of waller it out a little bit. Kind of just tilt it at an angle and it'll start opening up a little bit more. You don't, If you don't have a drill bit as big as that hole, just kind of keep working it and you can get it opened up. And then just take a razor knife just to kind of finish it out. Next, I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in um, truffle and I'm just taking a chip brush and I'm kind of going over my board. Now, I'm not going to seal it in completely or paint it completely. I'm just taking the chipboard and kind of roughly going over it so you still can see some of the cardboard underneath it. Okay, then I'm going to use some hazelnut by Waverly. It's a chalk paint also and I'm just going to take my chip brush and I'm just going to kind of brush it randomly onto here. And I'm kind of doing it at a, at a side angle. Just kind of get a little color in here. And then I'm doing the same thing with some black paint. And if you take your paintbrush and you spritz it with some water, it makes it a little bit easier to go on without having too much paint. Next, I'm going to spray paint my washers with some black paint. Okay, now that they're dry, I'm going, to, I'm going to sponge paint them with some burnt umber paint. This is just going to give it a little bit of a rust look. Okay, next I'm going to take a, a ruler. I'm going to come in two and a quarter inches on each side. Just make sure that it's even. And I'm going to take a black Sharpie and draw a line. I'm just going to make it look like it has wood slats. And then you're going to flip your board around and do the same thing for the opposite side. And then you're going to do that for the front and the back of both boards. Okay, then we're going to come back in with some more of that brown truffle and just kind of lightly go over those lines just to kind of soften them up. To attach the washer, I'm going to use both E6000 glue and hot glue together to attach these to my board. Just make sure that you get your hole centered. And I'm going to attach my two boards together kind of at a diagonal. And again, I'm using E6000 glue and hot glue to attach these. And kind of make sure that you got, a, got them even at the top. Okay, then I'm going to take a couple little popsicle sticks to put underneath one side of them after I get these glued together just to kind of lift it up and keep it level while it's drying. Okay, next I'm going to take some words and a little uh, leaf. I got all this at Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and fill this hole in too because I want it to be smooth. And then I'm going to paint these with a chalk paint by Waverly called Mineral. I'm going to paint all my pieces with this. 
And then I'm just going to put these all on my board and I'll kind of show you as I go along. I've got to go fast a little bit, but I'm just going to show you exactly what I'm attaching. And I got those little pumpkins at Dollar Tree and then these pine cones I just had. And then the acorns, you can get those at Hobby Lobby. They have those. Okay, and then to hang these, I'm going to give each side its own piece of jute. And then I'm going to um, hold it up and tie the two pieces of jute together so that they're level. And then you can just hang this on a door or hang it on the wall, whatever you want to do with it. It did, did turn out nice. This is definitely a rustic decor piece. I love this piece. Let me know in the comments if you decorate rustic. This is my style at my house. Let me know what you think. This next one I'm using a six and three quarter inch um, plaque. And I'm just going to take some of the Dollar Tree racetrack and I'm just going to screw it onto my plaque. Now cut off the bottom because all you need is just the very tip where you can put your screw through. And I'm just going to drill it in right into my plaque. And then we're going to take it over to the opposite side and, and screw that side in as well. And then pull it onto the other side, cut the other side off, and go straight across on that one. Then we're going to take another one. We're going to cut all the way off at the top of the circle and we're going to make our own hole there because we're going to go underneath the other one. We're going to go ahead and measure from side to side to get our center point on both sides. And that way we can make sure that we do have it even. And we're going to go ahead and cut off just below the hole on this side and we're going to just um, drill it right into here just with a screw. And then do the same thing on the other side where you made that mark. And you're going to have to make your own hole here. You could drill that first, but it, the screw went through it pretty easy. I'm going to cut a little Jenga block to put between them so that it doesn't squeeze this together when I screw my little top on. And I'm just using a little tabletop um, saw. This will cut through a half of an inch. It's great for Jenga blocks, and I'll give you the link for it in the description below. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take a measurement across the top and get my center point on here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the underneath side so that I make sure that when I put these together, I'm right in the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole through these and through my Jenga block to connect all this together. And then I'm just going to take my Jenga block, put it up underneath here, put my screw in first so I can get it started. Then I'm going to screw through the Jenga block and then through the top part. And you don't need a big piece of Jenga block, just enough to go in here. I can actually make that piece a little bit smaller, just enough to get it lifted so that you can put those two together without squeezing them together once you put your top on. And then I'm just going to put the ball right on top and screw it in. And then I'm going to paint the entire thing with a flat chestnut metallic Rust-Oleum paint. I'm taking a little candlestick holder that I got at um, Hobby Lobby and I'm going to paint it with a um, Waverly chalk paint in the Barcelona beige. And I'm going to take a dowel stick. I'm going to poke it through the bottom of each one of these so I can put the stem of the opposite one inside each of these. Stacking three of them together. And I'll glue them here together here in a minute. And then I'm going to take some um, Spanish moss and I'm just going to glue it to the top part of my little candlestick holder. And then I'm going to attach those two. And I'm going to take a dowel stick and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to put it into the bottom of the bottom pumpkin. And that's going to go down into our candlestick holder. It'll, it'll help it stay in place a little bit better. And then it needed to be a little bit shorter so I did have to trim it off just a hair. I'm going to go ahead and glue in my um, Spanish moss. I'm just making a pumpkin topiary.
and I'm going to put the bottom one with the stick in it inside of the Spanish moss and I'm going to start um, gluing them all together to stack them up. So I'm giving you a little bit of a different angle here. I'm going to glue my topiary right into my little um, stand here. And then I'm going to start styling it. And I'm going to kind of just go fast. I'm just going to put pumpkins and I'm going to put pine cones in it and some more of the Spanish moss. Just kind of put the Spanish moss, fill it up in the bottom and then go ahead and glue it in. And then I'm just going to start adding pumpkins on both sides. And then I'm going to add a bunch of pine cones to it as well. Okay, I was trying to go with more neutral tones and all of these little pumpkins came from the Dollar Tree. This was a pretty inexpensive project to make. Now I'm putting a little bit of um, Spanish moss between each of the pumpkins as well. Look like I have a helper there. <laughs> that was my hand going around the camera. It does look like I have a helper. Just kind of fill in with little pieces. You could actually use acorns and anything like that too. Just kind of fill it in, kind of make it a little bit full on the bottom. And then I'm going to add a tag to the top. And I got this tag at Dollar Tree too. I got it last year. I love how this piece turned out. I really do like to decorate with neutrals at my house. Let me know in the comments what you think and if this is something that you would put at your home. Okay, next we're going to take a pool noodle and we're going to cut it at two and a half inches in length. And we're going to cut five of them. This is real similar to the little pumpkins I did uh, last year. But we're going to use five of them. And this actually... Putting five of these together gave all the definition of what the pumpkin does look like. It gave it all the curves, so it did look more like a pumpkin. And then we're just going to connect them all together. You just kind of space them out a little bit, and then we're going to glue them together. Kind of get them in a circle, and then just go ahead and start gluing them in. Okay, then I'm just going to take some yarn, and this is a thick braided yarn, and I'm just going to start right in the center and glue that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull a bunch of this out, and um, so I have a little bit less to work with as far as going through that hole. And then, because you can add, and we will add as we go, more yarn. So just cut it off there where it's a little bit manageable, and then just kind of roll it up a little bit, and then try to just start stuffing it through. Don't even waste your time rolling it up. I figured out that wasn't going to work. So you just want to go ahead and start um, pulling it through. Go through the, um, the grooves first and then start filling in with the rest. So you're going to go in between each one of those pumpkins first and then just start filling it in. This really didn't take that much time to do. You can just sit and watch TV or whatever you want to do and just sit there and just weave it through. But it went pretty fast. And it's when you get through to the bottom part or to the end part, it is a little bit tighter in the middle, but it, you can still stick your fingers through it. And when you get to the end of your yarn, you're just going to go ahead and glue that into the center. And then we're going to add another piece. So that's not going to go all the way across. So you're going to go ahead and just glue that in. And you can glue it into the small holes inside the pumpkin too. And to add your next one, you can just go into the small holes as well. All this will get covered up as you're looping it through. Now that's on the bottom side. And it does get a little bit tighter here. But just keep going until you have it completely filled in. And then I'm just going to add a stem to the center. You kind of push it in, put a little glue on the bottom, and then kind of push it on down in there. And then I'm going to add a couple of those little magnolia leaves that I made earlier. Just kind of pinch them up there and we're just going to glue those right to it. And this was a pretty simple pumpkin.
This one was just super simple. You could use um, yarn, you could use fabric, anything you want to cover this. Let me know what you think. Okay, for this last one, I'm using one of the Dollar Tree pumpkin forms, and I'm using a roll of orange burlap that I got at uh, Michael's. And I'm just running it through here every other rung, and then I'm going to go back the opposite way after I finish. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some wire and wire this shut right here so it does stay in place. Just make sure that you wrap it and then put a little bit of wire in it just to hold it there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just run the wire through both the burlap and the wire and then just twist it off. And then go ahead and just start weaving it through. Now you're going to go every other, you're going to go the opposite way on this side. So when you first started on this first rung, now you're going to go through over that rung and keep going. And keep going until you have it halfway full. And keep pushing it down as you go because you want it to be pretty thick. And then once we get to the halfway point, we're going to start gluing it down a little bit. Okay, now that we're halfway through, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on each one of the little pieces of wire to keep that um, burlap in place. And go all the way across and do it to each one of them, pulling it down as you go. So I'm just going to take a paper bag, just a small paper bag, and you can use craft paper or whatever. We're just going to kind of wrap it around the wire so it's a little bit thicker so that we can put our leaves on it. And we're using the same magnolia leaves that we used on the previous projects. And you're just going to kind of glue it in, wad it up, kind of break up the fibers on it first. And then we're just going to glue it to each one of the wires and we're going to go all the way across like this. This will give us a little bit more room to add our leaves. And you're going to do it to all of them. And kind of squeeze it up there so it's a little bit tighter. And fill in the glue wherever you need to. And just keep going until they're all done. Next, we're going to use the same leaves that we used in the previous projects, the one I gave you the pattern for, and you're going to glue each one of them and have a bunch of them ready so that you can go pretty quick on your wreaths. To attach these, we're just going to take two of them, glue them together, starting at the bottom, and then we're just going to work our way up. And then we're going to cover them up a little bit with the orange that's there too. So just start with two at the bottom. And then we're going to come in with one in the center and just kind of pull that, that up over the top of it to cover at the bottom of the leaf. And then just add one in the center. And then we're going to add two again below that one that we just put on. So you're just going to kind of alternate with two and then one. And you don't have to glue them together um, to start this because you're kind of going to randomly put them in here. It's a little bit easier if you don't at this point. And you're just going to keep building all the way up till you get to the top. You don't want to go too far over the edge of the pumpkin, otherwise it won't look like a pumpkin anymore. But just kind of keep going until you get it almost to the top. And if you have to trim out that one at the top, you can. But you kind of want to just stop at the top of your pumpkin. Just kind of, You can kind of push them down a little bit farther as you start going just to get it um, in there good. And then just keep going up and you're going to go up each one of those little pieces of wire and then it'll be completely filled in. And next I'm just going to take some jute twine and I'm just going to wrap it around the stem all the way up to the top. Just kind of keep your rope pretty close together. You can glue between them if you want to, but um, if you just kind of pull them down there and keep them close and then glue them when you get to the top. It's just kind of did finish it out pretty nicely. And then I'm just going to add a bow. And if you want to know how to make this bow, you can stay tuned to the end of the video and I will have a real quick video on how to make a bow.
and I'm just sticking it right through the wire around the wire and then I'm just going to go ahead and twist it off in the back to hold it together. Next I'm just going to take a piece of ribbon and I'm going to make a loop. Now the long part hanging below that's the t one of the tails that I'm going to have so just however long you want that to be and then make your next loop and then wrap your wire around that and you're going to keep going and adding a loop at a time and wrap your wire around it. You want to start smaller um, loops in the beginning and then you'll gradually add bigger loops. But just keep pulling it around there and just take your ribbon and one wrap or two wraps each time you go. And then before you know it, you'll have a pretty big bow. And just kind of keep holding it together as you're going. But that wire, wrapping that wire is what's going to hold this all together. And then on the next row, you can go a little bit bigger and just kind of spread out your little loops a little bit. And you can use a wired ribbon or a non-wired ribbon. It doesn't matter. So that your next row, you're going to make a little bit bigger loop. Wrap your wire around it. And just keep adding your loops next to each other and wrapping your wire. This is an easy way to make a pretty, pretty bow pretty quickly. Just kind of hold it all together as you're going and then you can kind of mash it down in the middle to get it all pulled together at the end when you get done. And then I think that's going to be my last loop and then I'm going to cut it off so that I have a matching um, tail on it as, like I did the other side. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Just kind of shape it out there. I really love the way this one turned out. I'm going to hang this on the inside of my front door. If you enjoyed this video today, be sure and subscribe and be sure and ring that bell so you're notified when I have a new video upload. Thank y'all so much for watching. I really appreciate it and uh, hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.